Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Emily Goulet, the Director of Communications, here with today with uh, Mike Cashin, our Director of Operations. And we are going to talk about spending today and how can we reduce our spending, especially during this really... So, Mike, when things first started, it sounds like when all of this went down, it sounds like you realized that there was a lot happening and as we started to learn about the p possible pandemic from China, um, I think that alarm bells kind of went off in all of our heads and it sounds like you really took the reins and, and started to think about what you could do to reduce your, your, your spending. So what, what spurred you to start at, at that certain time point that you realized you, you needed to start reducing? Sure, um, great question. We live in a very global economy and everything is interlinked and intertwined. So when China started to see the coronavirus ramp up and we started seeing the, um, the people, the country, the organizations just like stopping and having to take extreme measures, um, we were seeing that from across the, the globe in the US that supply chains were halting, products weren't moving, services were not being provided. And then as the virus progressed across the globe, we started to see that more and more. And then as it got to be on a, on a you know, national, regional, and local level, we saw it uh, take place in a, in a really strong way. We saw you know, transportation coming to a halt, which is like 10% of GDP um, globally. And then we have you know, the, the travel, tourism, um, restaurant, hospitality industries just shutting down completely to try to quell the spread of the virus. But that's a huge chunk of um, discretionary spending. So um, I've, I've been watching our economy very quickly tighten up and that's gonna ripple through um, for quite some time and have an impact for the, the foreseeable future and could be as far out as like the next 18 or 24 months. So um, it definitely got me thinking about my spending and, and what could be done there. So when you say that you started thinking about your spending, what sorts of expenses did you realize you should really tighten up on? So that's a great question. I, I think over time we all forget the the full nature of where all of our money goes. Um, I look at it pretty often, but I pulled up my statements for my credit cards and my, my bank accounts. And I went by line by line um, through the course of the year, through everything uh, that was recurring. So rent, um, you know, gym membership, cell phone, um, other services that are out there um, that I use and may not use subscriptions to newspapers, um, how much I was spending on books, uh, transportation costs, insurance, um, everything. And where I really started to look hard in the beginning was what is it that I'm not using or what is it that's not giving me the most value that I could cancel and free up some cash. So that was where I started. Yeah, that's a really great starting point. And I think some of those smaller purchases too that aren't even necessarily recurring, but just changing our, our ways of thinking is also important too. Like that extra cup of coffee, I know that's a that's something that I love to spend money on. But what I did when this all started was I bought an espresso machine, which was a big upfront cost. But then in the long run, I'm not buying any more drinks <laughs> out at Starbucks and whatever. So it, it does, you, you certainly have to think about those things. Um, so if, if we were to, to all start to kind of look at our expenses and figure out what, what should we pare down and how, how should we go about doing this, what is some advice that you would give us? Well, um, there's a few things and it's different for everybody. Everybody values things differently and everyone's in different situations. There's certain people that are still employed right now. Um, some people that they're seeing their hours reduced or they're unemployed. So the what's really important to you is going to be very different from um, another person. So you need to remember that your needs and wants are, are very, very different. And uh, they're going to be different from what are what mine are. So the first step is yeah, the things that I can cut out completely. Um, the next step was, you know, what expenses can be reduced? Um, what does have a lot of value that I'd like to keep ideally or find a substitute for? So one thing that we all pretty much see is you know we have rent or mortgage payments if we um if we're in that position and we're not a dependent of somebody else so can that be reduced can you go back to your landlord or your mortgage company to see if you can 
uh, maybe refinance and reduce your interest rate and maybe free up some cash that way. Or if you're renting, um, you can go to your landlord and say, you know, things are getting really tight right now. Um, you know, do you have any flexibility over the next three or six months to reduce the cost of my rent so that I can remain a tenant and remain timely and continue to get cash flow to you? Um, or you could look at your credit cards. You know, they would ideally like to keep you as a customer. Why not see if you can reduce your interest rate? Um, you know, you can save a lot of money in a lot of ways. Um, and you can start to look at other things too, such as are there other service providers out there that are willing to offer the product at the same level, but at a different cost? Um, they'd love to get new customers, but at the same time, because of the way the economy is going, people are going to start to see a lot of customers go away. Um, so retention is going to be really important and will be a, a negotiating tool for people. Um, but again, it's it's very different for every person. You need to evaluate what's what's important to you and what's what's not. So for me, you know, a gym membership is really important because I'm very active. But for somebody else, that might not be the case. Um, you know, and, and other things. You know, I I listen to a lot of audiobooks, so I don't want to give that up. But that's that adds up over time. You know, it's a few hundred dollars a year easily. Um, but I was able to go and negotiate the cost of that down to 50% for the next six months. So um, definitely go through it and think about what's important to you, what you don't need, and everything. Don't question everything, I should say. Just question <laughs> everything because you never know until you ask um, what options are there. So question every line item if you want to keep it. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And especially right now when we're in such an unusual time, companies are a lot more, like you said, they, they want to keep your business. So they are a lot more willing to work with you. And, you know, six months ago, you might not have been able to get a good deal. But in this case, you have this really good excuse that you can take advantage of. So, yeah, so that's great. I think um, that that really sums up what we can be thinking about in terms of expenses and and thank you so much for sharing what you've done to help help yourself and how we can help our, ourselves in terms of really looking at our, our budgets and our expenses in this very trying time. So thank you. Yeah, I have one more point, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Um, so we're really early on in this. And yeah. you, you can definitely, you can start now and you can hit on all these line items. And if you have something that you you want to keep right now or you're not getting a good response, um, whether you go to them to try to reduce the rate, uh, interest rate or the cost or um, whatever the case may be. We're really early on and companies are starting to feel it, but you know, in, you can revisit this in three months, you can revisit it next month, you can revisit it in 12 months, 18 months. There will be opportunities out there. Keep, keep your eyes open. There's gonna be a lot of opportunity in terms of discounts. People may not want to go negotiate with you right now. Uh, if you need that service or you think you need that service, um, consider negotiating down the road. Um, or another tool that you can do if you're in the right position to do so and you have extra cash, you can often save a ton of money if you pay annually or semi-annually for a product or service. And I mean, there, there are companies that will give you 25, 50% off for doing that. So if you are in a position to do that, that's another path you can explore. Not everybody's there, but if you can do it, there's, there's a great way to keep that thing that you want or need and save a ton of money. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, Emily. I'm Mike and I'm the Director of Operations at the Morgan Franklin Fellowship. I wanna let you know that we do have free online resources such as our financial literacy program. So if you're looking to fill some time right now uh, during the uh, time where we're all spending time at home for the coronavirus, do check out the morganfranklinfellowship.com website and reach out to us if you'd like to learn more.